Hey guys, Jake from Aussie Reptiles here. Today's video, we're going to be doing similar to what I did in my last video, just fun facts and some information on uh, water dragons, specifically these Gippsland water dragons, which I do also have a Eastern here as well. I've got two Easterns in here, uh, but we're in the Avery and let's kick into some details and some information about water dragons. So, water dragons. This here is a small, uh, a female Gippsland water dragon. She's not very large. Um, there we go, she can sit there. So she's not very large at all. Um, she is a smaller specimen, but she is uh, mature in age. She's had eggs before. Water dragons don't make the best handling pets. So if you are looking for something a little bit more hands-on, especially for a child, I do not recommend uh, water dragons, uh, Gippsland or Easterns, because they're just not amazing handlers. Some can be, but for the majority part, they're not. Uh, that's why that girl didn't want to stay with me. So, here we have, this is my adult male. And you can see he's not very big at all. He's probably close to 60. Um, yeah, probably about 60 centimeters with his tail. So not very large. Uh, adult male water dragons can reach upwards to 100 centimeters. So a meter long in length. Again, not all are gonna get that large. And this guy is sexually mature. Uh, he is the father to the, to the clutches we've had and to the babies that I've also got as well. So that's my big male there. Here we have three other females. This one and this one, the two on the outsides, are both female Gippslands. And then this one here is actually an Eastern. So she's an Eastern Water Dragon. You can't really tell the difference right now, but essentially the, the Gippslands have more yellow to them, especially under their chin there. Right now, because it's dark, they're all showing fairly dark colours, which again is to help increase um, the amount of heat they're getting in through the sun. Black absorbs more heat, so they're much darker. On really warm days, these guys are quite tremendous in colour. You can see on the male here, he's got some nice aqua blues coming through. They're really vibrant on a nice hot day. The Easterns tend to be a little bit more light grey and some yellows um, on the side barring, especially on your males. But the Gippsland females are quite spectacular. They have nice aquas and yellows under their chins. Now what's the diet of a water dragon? Water dragons will eat anything from insects, especially when they're babies. Uh, they're gonna be quite um, feeding on small insects. Vegetation, uh, and they'll also eat other reptiles and small mammals as well. These guys can catch a, a rat or a mouse. Um, they'll eat it. They'll also eat eggs. Um, a lot of zoos actually have them in their bird aviaries for basically population control uh, because the water dragons will consume either unnecessary eggs or um, some small baby uh, birds as well. Some chicks that basically either get thrown out of the nest or stuff like that just to control bird populations and aviaries at zoos. What's also really cool about water dragons is they can hold their breath for up to 90 minutes underwater. So we can see here we've got a large pond. That's usually the areas they're found around. And what they'll normally do is sit on a branch, exactly how these are, above the water. If they get a spook, they'll dive into the water. And then they'll go hide down at the bottom of the water or somewhere into the water for 90 minutes, which is usually enough time for the predator chasing them to give up and go away. Our water dragons here in Australia, um, your main two, your Gippsland and Easterns, are found through the whole east coast of Australia from down in Gippsland in Victoria, which is where these guys are usually found, upwards to Queensland and so on, which is then where it integrates into your eastern water dragons. So they are quite common uh, in both the pet trade and to see in the wild as well. There's actually a hotel on the Gold Coast where we usually stay uh, sometimes when we go there, and they actually have a, quite a large family um, of, of eastern water dragons in literally in the middle of the Gold Coast in the city. They've just got a nice little population of water dragons living inside their hotel. Well, not inside, but in the garden of their hotel. How to identify a Gippsland from an Eastern. So sort of as I went past before, your Gippslands seem to have more of an aqua color to them and a little bit of yellowing to the chin. They are obviously also, if you find one down in Gippsland area in Victoria, they're Gippslands upwards to Queensland, New South Wales. They're usually your Victorians, uh, your Easterns. Eastern water dragons are predominantly grey, um, some having reds and oranges through them, but they're typically normally a grey colour with a black eye band across there, 
and that's usually quite predominant. Whereas usually your Gippsland water dragons, like this male here, do not have that eye banding. Now, water dragons, both Gippsland and Eastern water dragons, are egg layers. So they're going to have anywhere from obviously one, but to six to usually about 20 eggs uh, as an average. Uh, now, it takes roughly about three months, three to four months after those eggs have been laid for them to then hatch into tiny little water dragons. So that's pretty cool. It can take an uh, adult water dragon to reach sexual maturity uh, f up to five years until it's able to reproduce and have some offspring. So it's quite a while. Now the Australian water dragons, both Gippsland and Easterns, are probably one of my favourite uh, lizards that we can get here. Closely resembling, I guess, iguanas. Uh, we obviously can't have them in Australia here. I would absolutely love one, they're really cool. But for the time being, <laughs> for now, these are the closest that we can get to iguanas. So, pretty cool. The benefit to these are, is they can be kept outside basically all of Australia, anywhere from where I am in Victoria, uh, basically anywhere. They can tolerate really cold temperatures and they can tolerate some fairly moderate and high temperatures as well. So they make awesome animals to keep outdoors in a large aviary like this as well. Anyway guys, that will conclude this video. I know I'm a little bit of a short one. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this little bit of a different video than normal. Um, like always, if you did enjoy, leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if there's any other species you want me to do these videos on. And like always, I'll catch you in the next one.